me panting and heaving. And um, I had these legs that were made of like a wood and plastic compound attached with Velcro straps, big, thick, five-ply wool socks on. You know, not, not the most comfortable things, but all I'd ever known. And I'm up there in Boston against people wearing legs made of, of all things, carbon graphite. And, um, you know, shock absorbers in them and all sorts of things. And they're all looking at me like, OK, you know, <laughs> not going to win this race, you know. And I mean, I went up there expecting, I don't know what I was expecting, but I, you know, when I saw um, a man who was missing an entire leg go up to the high jump, hop on one leg to the high jump and clear it at six feet two inches. Dan O'Brien jumped 5'11 in 96 in Atlanta. I mean, if it just gives you a comparison of these are, you know, truly accomplished athletes without qualifying that word, athlete. And so I, I decided to give this a shot and, um, you know, heart pounding. I, I ran my first race and I, I beat the national record holder by three hundredths of a second and became the new national record holder on my first try out. And uh, I just think, you know, people said, hey, Amy, you've got speed, you've got natural speed, but you sh don't have any skill or finesse going down that track. You were all <laughs> over the place. We all saw how hard you were working. And uh, so I decided to, to call the track coach at Georgetown. And thank God I didn't know just how uh, huge this man is in the track and field world. He's coached five Olympians. and. You know, the man's office is lined from floor to ceiling with All-America uh, certificates, you know, of all these, these athletes he's coached, and um, just a rather intimidating figure. And I called him up and said, I, listen, I, I, I ran one race, and I've won, and I want to... I want to see if I can, you know, I, I need to just see if I can sit in on some of your practices, see how you, what drills you do, whatever. That's all I wanted, just two practices. Just can I just sit in and see what you do? And he said, well, we should meet first before we decide anything. You know, he's thinking, what am I, what am I getting myself into? So I met the man, walked in his office and saw all these, these posters and, and uh, magazine covers of people he was coached. And we said we got to talking, and it turned out to be a great partnership because he'd never coached a disabled athlete, so therefore he had no preconceived notions of what I was or wasn't capable of, and I'd never been coached before. So and this was like, here we go, let's let's start on this on this trip. So um, he started giving me four days a week of his lunch lunch break, um, his free time, that I would uh, come up to the track and, and train with him. So that's how I met Frank, but. Uh, that was fall of 95, and then by the winter rolling around, he said, you know, you're, you're good enough. You can run on our women's track team here. And I said, no, I, come on. You know, and he said, no, no, really, you can. You can, run, you can run with our women's track team. So uh, spring of, of uh, 1996, with my goal of making the, the U.S. Paralympic team that May, um, Coming up full speed, I, I, I joined the women's track team, become, and, and no disabled person had ever done that, run at a, a collegiate level. So, um, I don't know, it started to become a, an interesting mix. Well, why don't you tell them, like, on your way to the Olympics, but um, a couple of memorable events happened at Georgetown. Why don't you just tell them? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'd won everything as far as disabled meets, anything I competed in, and, you know, uh, training at Georgetown. And I, knowing that I was going to get, have to get real used to seeing the backs of all these women's shirts and I'm running against the next Flojo and they're all looking at me like, mm, what is, you know, what's going on here? And, and uh, you know, putting on my Georgetown uniform and, and uh, going out there and knowing that, you know, in order to become better, if I'm already the best in the country, you know, you have to train people who are inherently better than you. And uh, I went out there and, and had... Uh, made it to the Big East, which which uh, was like sort of the championship race at the end of the season, and um, really really hot. And it's the first I had just gotten these new sprinting legs that you see in that that bio, and um, I uh, didn't realize at that time that the you know the amount of sweating that I would be doing in the socket actually acted like a lubricant, and I'd be kind of pissing in the socket. And um, at about 85 meters of my 100 meter sprint in all my glory, I came out of my leg. Like, I almost came out of it in front of like 5,000 people. And I, I mean, just mortified and, and, because I was signed up for the 200, you know, which went off in a half hour. <laughs> I, I went 
to my coach and please don't make me do this. You know, I, oh, I can't do this more than people. My legs would come off. And if it came off at 85, there's no way I'm going 200 meters. And he just sat there and like this. And, uh, you know, my pleas, you know, fell on, on deaf ears, thank God. Because he, he was like, you know, the man's from Brooklyn. He's a, he's a big man. And he says, hey, mate. <laughs> So what if your leg falls off? You pick it up, you put the damn thing back on, and finish the goddamn <laughs> And I did. So, uh, you know, it, it sort of, he, he kept me in line. He kept me on the right track. <laughs> so, so then Amy makes it to the 1996 Paralympics, and she's all excited. Her family's coming down. It's a big deal. She's now two years you've been running? Like, no, oh, a year. year. And why don't you tell them what happened right before you go run your race? Okay, well, Atlanta. Um, the Paralympics, just, like, just for a little bit of clarification, are the Olympics for people with physical disabilities, amputees, persons with cerebral palsy, and wheelchair athletes, as opposed to the Special Olympics, which um, deals with people with mental disabilities. So, um, you know, here we are, like, a week after the Olympics and down Atlanta, and I'm just blown away by the fact that, you know, just a year ago, I got out in a gravel track and couldn't run 50 meters. And so here I am, never lost. You know, I, I set new records at the, at the U.S. Nationals, the Olympic Trials that May, and was just, you know, sure of it, that I was coming home with the gold. I was also the, um, the only, uh, what they call bilateral BK, below the knee. I was the only woman to be doing the long jump. Um, I, I started the long jump, and a guy who was missing two legs came up to me and says, how do you do that? You know, we're supposed to have a planter foot so we can't get off on the springboard. I said, well, I just did it. No one told me that. So uh, it's funny, I'm three inches within the world record. And it uh, kept on from that point, you know, so I'm, in, I'm in, signed up in the long jump. Signed up. So I made it to the long jump and, and the 100-meter. Uh, and I'm sure of it, you know, I made the front page my hometown paper that I delivered for six years, you know, it's like I was, this is my time for shine. And we're at the, the warm-up stadium, Cheney warm-up track, which is a few blocks away from Olympic Stadium, and these legs that I was on, which I'll take out right now, uh, I was the first person in the world on these legs. I was the guinea pig, and um, I'm telling this was like, talk about it, a tourist attraction. Everyone was taking pictures of... What is this girl running on? And I'm literally looking around like, where, where's my competition? It's my first international meet. Um, I tried to get out of anybody I could. You know, who, what kind of, you know, who am I running against here? Oh, Amy, we'll have to get back to you on that one. I, I wanted to find out times. Don't worry, you're, you know, don't worry, you're doing great. This is 20 minutes before my race in Olympic Stadium, and they post the heat sheets. And I go over and I look, and my fastest time, which was world record, was 15.77. Then I'm looking, the next, you know, lane two is 12.8. Lane three is 12.5. Lane four is 12.2. I said, what's going on? And they shove us all into the shuttle bus, and all the women there are missing a hand. <laughs> Which one of these is not like the other, you know? And I'm, 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 sitting there, I'm sitting there like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, I'd never lost anything, like whether it be this, this scholarship or, you know, I'd, I'd won five golds when I skied and, and everything, you know, I, I, I came in first. And Georgetown, you know, that was great, you know, was, I, I was losing, but it was the best training because this was Atlanta. But here we are, like, creme de la creme, and there is no doubt about it that I'm going to lose big. And, you know, I just think, oh, my God, my whole family, you know, got in a van and drove, to, drove down here from Pennsylvania. And, you know, I was the only female U.S. sprinter. So, uh, you know, they call us out, and, you know, ladies, you have one minute. And uh, I remember just putting my blocks in and, and just feeling horrified because there's this murmur coming over the crowd, like the ones who can, are close enough to, to the starting line to see. And I'm like, I know, look, you know. <laughs> this isn't right. And I figured that's my last card to play here is at least, you know, if I'm not going to beat these girls, I'm going to mess their heads a little bit, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely... 
definitely the Rocky IV sensation of me versus Germany and, you know, everyone else, <laughs> Estonia and Poland was in this, this heat. And, you know, the gun went off and all I remember was, you know, finishing last and, uh, you know, fighting back tears of frustration and, and um, incredible, incredible, this, this feeling of just being overwhelmed. And it, I had to think about why did I do this, you know, if every, I'd won everything and it was like, what was the point of this training and, and, and I transformed my life. Um, I became a collegiate athlete, you know, became an Olympic athlete. And uh, it made me really think about how, you know, the achievement was, was getting there. I mean, the fact that I set my sight just a year and three months before that on becoming an Olympic athlete and saying, you know, here's my life going in this direction and I want to take it here for a while. And just seeing how far I could push it and the fact that I asked for help, how many people jumped on board, how many people gave it their time and their expertise, you know, and their patience to deal, you know, to deal with me. And, and it was, that was like this collective glory that there was, you know, 50 people behind me that had joined in this incredible experience of going to Atlanta. So, I mean, it's, I've, I've, I apply this sort of philosophy now to everything I do about like this, this you know, sitting back and realizing the progression, like how far you've come at this day to, to this goal, you know. Not, it's important to focus on a goal, I think, but, you know, I'll also recognize the progression on the way there and how, how you've grown as a person, you know. That's the, that's the achievement, I think. That's the real achievement. Why don't you show them your legs? Oh, sure. You know, that's, well, she um, has more than one these, set of legs. You know, yeah, these are my pretty legs. These are... <laughs>